Disney Channel star is busted again right here in Las Vegas. Police tell us that Orlando Brown, former Disney star arrested Orlando Brown, best known for his role on That's a Raven. Former Disney star down the wrong path right here in Las Vegas. Brown's second arrest here in Las Vegas over the summer. From Disney star to homeless and in danger, Orlando Brown. Hey, mate, it's Orlando Brown, the legendary one. <laughs> it's me, and I'm here with my people. Progress report. Chill. Calm down. Okay. No, 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 you, 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 you too. That bitch, put your clothes on. He's obviously delusional. Let me tell you something, look. Let me tell you something, brother. All right. No, I said nigga. Well, fuck it, nigga. Let me tell you something. <laughs> All right, you want to look you, you know what I'm saying? He's financially in shambles. Mm -hmm. His living arrangements is in shambles. His whole life is in shambles right now. And he doesn't quite understand. You're looking at the whole titty now. If you close your eyes like I'm doing, then I know stop it. Don't shut up. Okay, so listen, you, you know, you're, you're thinking about the titty now. Just the titty. And when you think about the titty, you got to think about like how at, at a, a certain age, the areola does not form yet. You know, you got to turn like 20 or something. So, so right now, it was, I was, you know, 14 and it was, it was, everything was supple. You know, I told you about the peaches and cream and how you, she was, you know, you, you know, sucking on my little thing and all that. It was great. But, uh, you know, you got to look about the see, it was right here. And it went down. And you touch the titty right there and it's right there in the middle and it's round. That's what makes me an end And like this problem started a long time ago. I don't know how he even got this far in life. What you call it, the areola? The areola, yeah, the areola, yeah. I, I remember just the areola. She was so nervous about this second on the areola because it had no color. So no one at all wants to deal with him. And then I figured out why he has a mental problem that he is not addressing. Like we'll be driving and we'll be listening to music and then you know he'll just turn the music down and he'll be like, Will Smith is my dad. Can you call him? And I'm and I'll look at him, you know, because it's shocking sometimes because it comes out of nowhere. We'll be fine and then out of nowhere he'll say, I'm Prince Jackson. Michael Jackson is my father. I'm I own Neverland. Sometimes you don't know if he's playing. Serious. He know we're coming to see Dr. Phil, and he keeps saying, Dr. Phil? Oh, no, that's Steve Hart. Oh, don't worry about Nick. Nick, okay, look, fine. Fine, okay? You want me to tell everybody? You want me to let everybody know what that? Okay, fine. Nick, I'll let you suck my dick. Okay? Fine, I say it. I'll let Nick suck my dick. And, <laughs> and I liked it. It was okay. Fine. Nick, you suck my dick. But everybody knows you did it as a female. But Nick, you sucked my dick. I don't want to say that. You know? Nick been sucking dick. <laughs> Nick, you know you been sucking dick. <laughs> you your mouth, motherfucker. <laughs> you don't want me on while enough. Nick been sucking dick. Nick. Been, everybody in the world gonna be like, Nick been sucking dick. <laughs> Nick been sucking dick. Uh, we got into a big argument. He woke up delusional thinking that I stole his vape pen. screaming, banging on the doors, and that was the final straw. I had to put him out, he was running around the streets, no shoes on, and uh, he ended up going to jail. The fuck out. <laughs> You 
away from my house, yo. If you come back over, I'm gonna knock you the fuck out. I'm off your property! You wait over here for the police. I'm off your property! You don't come back. After um, his career with so many different people and trying to reach out to everyone, his mom, none of the co-stars that he's had in the years, nobody wants anything to do with him. Orlando just got a tattoo of your face on his neck. Yeah, what do you make of that? I make of the second season of That's a Raven will be coming out July 25th. Are you Raven's home? No. Raven's home. And Raven's home. And Raven's home. She said That's a Raven coming out July 25th. I did? Yes, she did. I'm sorry. She confused me. <laughs> on blood, you evil as fuck. All that shit is mine! You wanna, but you wanna do play Mike Tyson, nigga? What you wanna do? What you wanna play the baby, nigga? Anderson welcomed a healthy baby boy named Orlando Frankie Brown. He soon moved to Paris, California with his grandmother, Judy Anderson. He would later go on to become one of the most popular household names in America for several of his appearances in some of the most popular known sitcoms in the coming years. Orlando Brown had his first television debut starring on the TV show Coach which was an American sitcom television series that aired for nine seasons on ABC from 1989 to 1997. He started as the kid on the seventh season on the 23rd episode, 10% of Nothing, which aired on 4th April, 1995. Although he had no lines, this appearance would soon lead to a variety of TV appearances. It wasn't long after that Orlando landed a more prominent role on the popular American television sitcom that originated from ABC from 1989 to 1997 before moving to CBC from 1997 to 1998. Jerry Jamal 3G Jamison was played by Orlando Brown from 1996 to 1998, 3J, a nickname referring to his real name, Jerry Jamal Jameson, was a young orphan whom Carl and Harriet adopted in the season 8 on episode 5, 3J in the House. He later went on to guest star besides real life twin sister, Tian Tamara Moore, on their famous 1994 TV sitcom, Sister Sister. He played as Clayton on the episode that aired on 15 January 1997 on season 4, episode 13 named Little Mandate. Over the years, Orlando was able to build a strong acting resume starring in smaller and larger roles in a number of TV shows and movies. And if you have to see it to believe it, here are some of the sitcom TV series that he starred in, as well as some of the movies that he starred in. would assume, whoa, that's a lot, right? But no, it didn't stop there. Here are some other things that he starred in, just to boost up his resume. You would assume with all these roles, like, he looks like he already made his mark in Hollywood and secured a very promising career in Hollywood. 
Since the very age of just eight, as you would expect from his long resume of TV shows, movies, sitcoms, and animated series, it seemed like there was nowhere else to go but up. But just as his rise was in the works, his fall would soon follow. So what happened to Orlando Brown? How could such an aspiring career be cut short? How did his spiral become inevitable? And what could have been done to avoid his downfall? This tragic spiral all began on April 10, 2007 at 1 a.m. in Houston, Texas. Orlando was stopped by the police officers for driving recklessly without headlights. The officers on duty found marijuana hidden in the car while searching it. Orlando argued that the car was taken on loan from a friend and that he was unaware of what was hidden in the car. This would soon be the beginning of the end. Brown was taken into custody without incident and charged with misdemeanor marijuana possession. He was released on bond. He was stated saying, I don't want this arrest lingering over my head. I love what I do. Why jeopardize what I built? He stayed in the clear for a few years until on August 11, 2011, in Hollywood, California, nearby his house. Orlando was stopped by the police officers for not having a license plate. As they approached the car, they smelled alcohol. They found him to be driving under the influence of alcohol after administering a sobriety test. His then-girlfriend, who was also pregnant at the time, was in the same car. He was arrested and released on the bail of $15,000. At this point, you would think after his previous two driving arrests, he would have learned his lesson and been a little more cautious. However, that was not the case. He was arrested again on the same case again on May 2012 after he was caught drunk driving again. Thus, he had violated the conditions of his probation. And I wish I could stop here, but no, to make matters even worse. On July 2012, he was arrested again for failing to appear for a court hearing related to his case. And honestly, the worst of his cases begins just now. Let's flash forward two years ahead on August 2014. Orlando found himself taken into custody. After being arrested by the police for entering a woman's apartment and threatening to kill both her and her son. After being charged for disturbing peace and public drunkenness. He was not charged for death threats because of the lack of evidence. Orlando was arrested in February 2016 on charges of beating his girlfriend and possessing methamphetamine after he was reported by an eyewitness who saw him beat the girlfriend in the car. Police were called to the scene after he struck her in the parking lot of a police station and he was found by the officers to be in possession of methamphetamine, a stimulant drug. At the time of the incident, the police arrived at the scene and asked him to move out of the car. When he refused to do so, he was driven to the police station in the same car. At the police station, he was found by the officers to have a large amount of meth stacked in the car. Orlando, however, rejected the charges of domestic abuse and called it a false charge. Brown was arrested and later charged with domestic battery, obstruction of justice, drug possession with intent to sell, and possession of counterband in jail, following an altercation with his then-girlfriend in public. Orlando had failed to appear in court on the scheduled date, and an arrest warrant was issued regarding the issue. He was finally arrested by the police on January 18, 2018, in Barstow, California, when the police were informed of a domestic disturbance in a private residence because of quarrel between Orlando, his girlfriend, and her mother. He was charged with domestic battery, drug possession, and resisting arrest. He was released on bail after spending jail time in Barstow when he again failed to appear in the court. An arrest warrant was issued against him. And oh boy, Orlando fled to California State to avoid arrest. 
He was eventually caught by the bounty hunters in Las Vegas on April 13, 2018. He was hiding in the closet of a private home. There was a video captured by TMZ when he was getting arrested. You should definitely check it out. I can't really post it on here, but I'll leave it in the description for you to check out. And oh god, you must be tired of all these arrests. But bear with me here. On the 5th of July, 2018, he was once again stopped by the police officers near a hotel infamous for illegal drugs and prostitution in Las Vegas. When he refused to cooperate, he searched his taxi forcibly and found him in possession of meth and pipe drug equipment. He was charged with possession of drugs, drug equipment, drug paraphernalia, and resisting arrest. Flash forward several months later, Brown recently released from a medical facility where he's been hospitalized for undisclosed reasons, so God knows for what, Orlando was arrested by police officers on September 2nd, 2018 in Las Vegas after he broke into the Legends restaurant and venue owned by his childhood friend, Danny Boy, and tried to change the locks. Luckily for Danny Boy, he was captured entering the building without permission in the security cameras. He was found and arrested on the roof of the building. And this is a lot to take in. So here shows a recap of some of his arrests. And Orlando, Orlando, Orlando has been known for his numerous controversies over the years. The first being his disappearance in 2008. Brown had left his manager's home in the studio city to go to a convenience store nearby on April 22, 2008. The store was just a walkable distance away. Orlando did not return from the store. He was reported missing after the search. He, however, returned after 24 hours and publicly apologized for not informing about his whereabouts. He said he disappeared because he needed to be alone. His second controversy involved calling Trey Song's day. In the beginning of 2017, actress Kiki Palmer and singer Trey Song's had a bad feud. Kiki accused Trey of sexual intimidation. Orlando made comments on the issue through a video. He was critical of both Kiki Palmer and Trey Song. He commented, I don't understand it. Everybody knows Trey Song's is gay and sucks bleep. He didn't want you. You and I both know, Kiki, that was the gag. He is a bleep. I don't have nothing against you people. Just don't bring that shit this way. And we're gonna be A-okay. He got media slack for outing Trey Songz as gay. He later deleted the video following the backlash. The third controversial incident involved Orlando Brown's sex tape. There was a sex tape featuring Orlando and an unidentified woman leaked onto the internet through a Twitter account in 2017. The account had Orlando's name, not his official account. The username was Claim Your Shape. Twitter went absolutely wild. And now, even if you go online, you can find some of the most hilarious Twitter tweets related to the incident. It was rumored that the video was released by himself. Some speculated of a hack on his computer and a release of personal information. Others believe he probably posted it while under the influence of substance. The Twitter account is suspended now and the page is no longer available. And oh, we are just beginning. Cause no, there is more to this. Orlando Brown's fourth controversial incident involved Raven Simone's neck tattoo. Orlando had always been the guy who's been obsessed with Raven Simone and the guy who could not stop talking about it. And in early 2018, he proved that once more when Orlando had debuted a big tattoo of his That's Raven co-star, Raven Simone, on his neck. When she was asked to react to that by the entertainment team, she cleverly dodged it while promoting the second season of Raven's Home. His fifth controversial incident involved him entering into a rehab. On the instances of close friends and family, Orlando joined an intervention center in 2018 to get help for his addictions. However, just a week, just a week after his admission, he was seen leaving a friend's house with a box of wine bottles. He was having a verbal fight with the owner of the house. The owner of the house was threatening him 
not to step into the house premises ever again. And the wildest, craziest controversy till date was Orlando Brown's appearance on a Dr. Phil episode. In an episode of the TV reality show Dr. Phil, aired on 21st December 2018, hosted by the famous psychologist Phil McGraw, Orlando Brown made numerous unsubstantiated claims. Some of the claims were perceived as outrageous by the viewers of the show. Some of the claims he made on the show are, he's the son of Michael Jackson. Orlando Brown claimed he's the biological son of the musical sensation late Michael Jackson and that his full name is Orlando Brown Prince Michael Jackson Jr. Here, just have a look for yourself. We'll be fine, and then out of nowhere, he'll say, I'm Prince Jackson. Michael Jackson's my father. I'm, I own Neverland. Sometimes you don't know if he's playing or if you don't know where he's serious. Yeah. What's your full name? My full name is Orlando Brown, Prince Michael Jackson Jr. And uh, that's AKA Blanket. <laughs> so what's Prince Michael Jackson Jr.? Uh, well, it's my... my my, my nickname like I gave to myself because um, yeah my, my father was Michael Jackson great Michael Jackson so. your, your father was Michael Jackson his second claim as told by his manager is that Will Smith is his dad well like we'll be driving and we'll be listening to music and then you know he'll just turn the music down and he'll be like Will Smith is my dad can you call him and, I'm, and I'll look at him, you know, because it's shocking sometimes because it comes out of nowhere. His third claim is that he has four children. He claimed he has four children till the date that he neither has met any one of them, nor does he know their names. As per his claims, his eldest child was about 16 to 18 years at the time, making him a father at just the age of 13 or 15. It's a possibility for me because I just want to see my kids. Yeah. So how many children do you have? Uh, quite a bit, but four that I know of. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely looking forward to seeing them. So. How old are your children? Uh, I, my, my kids are what, two. One is uh, five. One is um, one is actually eleven, and the oldest is like sixteen to eighteen. Okay, sixteen or eighteen? Yeah, one or two. You're not sure. Not sure until I get until I get to in in front of their faces. I've been like like I said, I was a, a, I was a mess for a while, man. What's your two-year-old's name? Two-year-old's name, uh, actually Shyler. And uh, is that a girl or a boy? That's a, a little girl. What's your five-year-old's name? Well, Orlando Jr. Actually. What's the eleven-year-old's name? My eleven-year-old's name. <laughs> I gotta figure that one out. But if I had the name, if I had the name of anything, it'd be. Uh, John. What do you mean if you had the name he meant he doesn't have a name? Not, I mean, like, I, I haven't met all my children yet. Oh, only really? seen, yeah, I only seen Mason when he was little. Um, but as far as the little girls and everything, I haven't met, I haven't met them yet. What's the 16 year old's name? That, don't even know that either. Don't know the... No, don't know the 16 year old's name. That's what I'm intending on doing. Getting, you know, back with the fam and figuring out, you know, who everybody is and what, what everything is. And here's where the twist comes in. When he was asked regarding the four children again, his statement seemed to have changed all of a sudden. Within 30 minutes. Keep in mind, in Netherlands, that he had a two-year-old, but the name was still unknown because it was still in the belly. You want to get back to your, you want to get back to your kids? Yeah, it's like yeah, I want my kids to be with me in Neverland. I just don't want to. And how old are your kids? Um, I got a two-year-old, four, uh, two-year-old, uh, five, no, see, a five-year-old, um, I think he's eight and eleven. All right, now, and what's a two-year-old's name? Two-year-old, um, still in the belly, <laughs> still in the belly, we don't know yet. Okay, and what's a five-year-old's name? Uh, that's Mason. And the eleven-year-old? Silent. Okay, can I show you something? Yeah. I asked you before... Yeah. If you had kids, you said, yes, I have four. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, what are their ages? You said two, five, 11, and 16. Mm -hmm. I said, what's the, what's the two-year-old's name? You said Shyler. Okay. The five-year-old is Mason. Right. The 11-year-old is John. Right. 16-year-old 
I don't know, I gotta find out. Right. I asked you this time, you said the two-year-old don't know the name because it's still in the belly. That's because I have a baby on the way as well. I just mentioned so that. So <laughs> the two-year-old is still in the belly, so that means that that child has been in there for two years. Not necessarily. And then you said the five-year-old is Mason. Then you said there's an eight-year-old. Up here you didn't say there was an eight-year-old. Down here you said there's an 11-year-old, and you didn't right. mention a 16-year-old. Did you, did you not hear me say before you started this whole conversation about my kids? What I said was, I have a lot of kids, but I'll say I'll have four right now. That's yeah. exactly what I said. <laughs> so yeah. me, as a father, still trying to jump back into that life and figure out who everybody is, you can't ridicule me for not knowing exactly. I'm not ridiculing you. All right, well, yeah, because I, I mean, of course I'm gonna make a mistake if I haven't seen my kids. They were taken from me. <laughs> but how long has it been since you've seen these kids? Bro, honestly, I see my kids everywhere. But at the end of the day, like I said, I barely don't, I barely see them, I don't know them. They don't know me. That's what this whole thing is about. Being able to identify and, you know, get back with my kids and stuff. I'm not showing you this to make you feel bad about not being around your kids. I made the point that right now, you're an extremely intelligent guy. Mm -hmm. And I said, but you're confused in your thinking. And as evidence that you're confused in your thinking 30 minutes apart, you are confused about names and dates of yeah, children. Yeah, well, I'm trying to put that together. Another thing um, that he made was that he had been sober for four years. He claimed to have stayed away from drugs and alcohol for four years. However, as we've seen earlier, he has had ongoing legal issues concerning possession of illegal drugs, possession of drug equipment, and resisting arrest in the last couple of years. So that makes absolutely no sense. Uh, kind of kind of took over, so I'm glad I kicked that. So today I'm glad to say I'm four years sober. And uh, you know, it's, it's been uh, quite a journey. <laughs> yeah. And how are you doing now, mentally, emotionally, drug and alcohol wise? I mean, just all across the board in terms of your functioning, how are you doing now? Doing well, um, doing very well. Actually, I'm proud of myself. I've never been one that was really too big on addiction. So, like I do, I used to do things out of boredom. Um, but then I woke up and, and realized, that, you know, I was sleeping next to uh, my, my, my drug of choice. And it's like, damn, bro, you got a problem. You know, so now I have that understanding and that peace um, within myself. And, and plus, you know, I'm doing it for my, my kids as well. You know, every time I think about, you know, either relapsing or anything of that nature, it's, it's an impossibility for me because I just want to see my kids. Yeah, and you should take that help. I'm four years sober for a reason. I just now got out of rehab. I just now got out of an ER. I just got, I'm not doing no more time away from my kids other than I need to. I, I appreciate that, but me being free after being locked behind bars for no reason and being set up, oh, like I'm not, I can't dedicate another 90 days of being monitored all my life. I don't need that crap like other people. It's a slap in the face to people. And the fifth wildest claim was that he and Raven Simone were close and that he had to find a way to ask her to marry him. Although he and Raven at the time were not even on speaking terms and she had a relationship of her own yeah. at the time. Uh, do you still speak to Raven? Of course. Mm -hmm. Of course. Like, I haven't seen her uh, too much lately, but... Um, What's your relationship like with her now? Right now, um, it's pretty pretty good. I want to I wanted to marry her, but I gotta find out a way to to ask her. So um, right about now, I'm just uh, just chilling. <laughs> and you may think you've heard it all from Orlando Brown, but no. On 22nd January 2020, his most recent controversy involved the Nick Cannon incident. On 22nd January 2020, Orlando claimed that actor-comedian Nick Cannon had performed oral sex on him while being dressed as a woman. Actor Nick Cannon chose to answer the claim on Instagram. He said, when I first saw this, I thought it was freaking hilarious. Further, he sympathized with Orlando. All I see is a cry out for help. He stressed on the importance of having support figures, without which it is easy to get lost in Hollywood. I don't know if there are any real figures or solid individuals in this young man's life. Let's embrace him. I tighten him up so he doesn't become another lost victim to these Hollywood circumstances.
another yet controversial yet famous interview that landed him with his very own catchphrase and involving what he had done with a woman in an intimate moment. Sadly, I can't really keep it on here, but I'll leave it in the description because it is absolutely wild and you need to definitely check it out. And so you may ask, what is the importance of assessing what happened to Orlando Brown and why we, as distant viewers, would rather laugh than really ask the deep, deep questions on what is being done to our child stars. The important question should be what we can do to avoid another tragedy to one of our beloved future child stars. If we had learned anything from the cases of Miley Cyrus, Bella Thorne, and Amanda Bynes over the years, we can see that being in the spotlight can turn any bright child into half or less of a shell that we once knew. However, there is good news to this Orlando Brown saga. In November 2020, Brown graduated from Rice Discipleship, a free six months inpatient recovery program in Abilene, Texas, in which was dedicated to helping men overcome addiction and homelessness. Among other situations, according to the Christian Post Leonardo Blair, Brown claimed that he plans on getting married after his graduation and he's looking forward to reuniting with his family and his life. So let's hope that this is the long-awaited end to the saga of crime, drugs, and alcohol. We must pray that his once public downfall has finally come to an end. We got another testimony. Uh, it's my brother Orlando Brown. He's going to come up here and share his story with you guys. Creatures in my bedroom at night. Let me hear you say, Father, we thank you for this time, for this praise. Yeah, that part, that part, that part, that part, that part. My name is Orlando Brown. Hello, everybody. Um, you may know me from a little show back in the day called That's Right, That's So Raven. And, uh, you know, I, I went through a lot. You know, I experimented with crystal meth, uh, uh, weed. I didn't know what I was doing. I had an addiction to the internet, all kinds of stuff, you know. My fiance told me about this place, and when I when I came, it was amazing. You know, I had I had a blast. His brothers accepted me for who I am, and um, yo, man, I, I mean, I got a whole team of brothers now. The church is lovely, you know. Um, all I can tell y'all is all the leaders are brilliant. They're geniuses and they're men of God, um, and, and they're raising us all up in, in in the way to be the same. You know what I mean? So. All I can tell y'all is uh, I want to say thank you to all the leaders. I want to say thank y'all for coming out and uh, definitely donate. It's going to help the brothers. It's going to help the family. It's going to help the team. You know what I mean? And uh, that's all I can say. God bless y'all. Thank y'all so much. No peace of amen, mind. amen. Hey, he, he, he's really sugarcoated, man. This dude, he came in. No, I, we're, we're out there, right? We're pretty out there, man. This dude came in. He's completely turned around. He got on discipline like his third week. Did it like a man. Turned everything around. Uh, now he's leading class. He's actually overseeing discipline now and teaching other brothers how to get through it. I'm super proud of you, man. Proud of you, Orlando.